Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 49. And Jacob called unto his sons, after he's blessed Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, calls his sons, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which, be, which shall befall you in the last days. Jacob's a prophet, and we're going to see the prophecies set forth on this blessing of his children. Now, deathbed testimonies, Paul's, 2 Timothy 4. Peter, 2 Peter 1, Jesus, John chapter 17, and then Jacob's chapter 49 here. Gather yourselves together, and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. That's who he is. Remember, he had the name change. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might. And the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Yay, all right, I like that, Dad. Yay, keep going, keep talking about me that way. Come on, Dad, don't stop. Reuben's the firstborn, that is what the firstborn child is to be of his father. Colon, it's not finished. Unstable as water. Dad, thou shalt not excel. That's interesting. This is why right here, Reuben is not in the line of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does not come from Reuben. Reason why? Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. <clears throat> now notice... Now we got third person speaking. Jacob the father speaking to his son Reuben. He says, Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. God is speaking. And what God is speaking is saying, I'm taking over Jacob's mouth for a moment, if I may say it that way. As far as this line of Jesus Christ, I'm going to explain to you that because you committed fornication, the same sin you find in the Corinthian church, you are not going to be of my son, Jesus Christ. But it's <clears throat> interesting, the fact is, when you do look at Tamar, Judah uh, with Tamar, that story, which we already read about, uh, Rahab, I'm trying to remember her name. Ruth the Moabitess. So those are interesting things. But Jacob was speaking, and God intervenes. Thy father's bed. Then thou defiles thou it. He went up to my Jacob speaking again. Couch. So verse four, you got God coming in. And then he returns back to Jacob speaking. Thy father. My couch. So. Simeon and Levi. Ooh, he groups these two together. Genesis 34. As the reference. Are brethren. Instruments of cruelty. And in their habitations. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Come not thou into their secret. 
Genesis 34 revealed unto their assembly my honor be not thou united don't put these two boys together you're going to get trouble for in their anger they slew a man Shechem's son or Shechem himself forget which of the two characters are remember his father came and said you know my son loves your daughter Dinah I'll do anything can we have her and in their self will they dig down a wall they destroyed the entire city what they did is say listen we can't allow you to marry our, our daughter you got to be circumcised so they went and got circumcised and while they were in deep great pain Simeon and Levi went and killed slewed all the males of the city and took the spoils of the city for that they lose the right of the be of the line of Jesus Christ. The Levi will be that priestly class. Now all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. You need to get that and understand that. Some Levites help their brethren the priests. But all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Curse, there you go, be their anger. When was the last time you saw a father curse one of his children? I'll give you a cool grandchild. Noah. When, he's, when he is blessing Japheth, Shem, and he says, Curse it be Cana, the son of Ham. I'm sorry, I'm stuffy. Curse it be their anger. For it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. We're going to keep them apart. We're not going to put these two together. And Simeon almost disappears. Levi with Moses. Who's on the Lord's side? Oh, we are Levites. Grab your swords and go slay. A man comes in with a mixed marriage, mixed mixed woman of, of the land, and you know they're they're running around naked and all that. They're partying, hoo hoo, they're having a good old time. And one of Aaron's sons, I believe, took a javelin and right right through them with a javelin to kill them. They're fierce. Moses is a Levi. He's a pretty fierce dude. Okay, now we get to Judah. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Now let's look at this as the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they didn't praise him the first coming. Oh, but the second advent. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Second advent. Jesus Christ will have a hold of those losers. And when I mean a loser, I mean somebody who will not believe on Jesus Christ. They're a loser. You know, just because you didn't run the ball across the line or throw it through a hole or have, you know, run around on plates and you didn't get enough points, that, that's not a loser. A loser is somebody who will not do what God has told him to do. Especially when it comes to salvation. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. A kingly line. David, Solomon, all the way to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Judah is a lion's well. And check Revelation. A lion out of the tribe of Judah. Scripture with scripture. There it is. And this is Jacob prophesying about Jesus Christ through his voice. From the prey. My son, my son, Jesus Christ. This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. Hear he him. Thou art going up. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, he's going up, sitting at the right hand of the Father, maybe. He stooped down. 
He crouched as a lion. As an old lion. Well, how old is Jesus? He's all forever eternal. Who shall rouse him up? Do you really think that our prayers as in the church age as Bible-believing, born-again, Bible-believing Christians? Do you think our prayers are really going to hurry God up in the rapture? God has a time frame. <clears throat> God's not going to be in holy heaven with the sun at the right hand. Oh, Jesus, that one saint has prayed. Go get him, will you? Oh, got to do it at his... No, it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm not saying the rapture's not happening. I'm not saying I'm asking for it. I do ask for the rapture to happen. But in reality, God has his time. And it will be done in God's time. Those Jews are going to want deliverance in Jacob's trouble. And they're not going to get it to the seven years are up. Not three and a half years. Not four years. Not five and a half years. Not six. Not six and three quarters. 6.99. Seven years. The scepter. That is the reign of God. That is the reign of a king. Esther, unless he holds out his scepter, I'm a dead dog. It's that instrument that a king holds for authority and power. The rod of iron, the Bible speaks about, of Jesus Christ. Shall not depart from Judah. The kingly line will only be from Judah. King Saul was of Benjamin, and that, that didn't count. Jesus Christ needed to be of Judah. So when you find the line in Matthew 1, it's the line of kings. When you find the line of Mary in Luke chapter 3, yes, yeah, it's not of the kings because of the virgin birth, because, you know, uh, the kingly line has been stopped because of sin, causing the virgin birth. And yet when you trace that lineage back of Mary, she goes back to Judah. That kingly line of Judah had stopped, halted. God said, oh, her, 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 right this man childless. And because of the virgin birth, we pick up the king of, how did, how did, Pilate say, he said, the king of the Jews. We pick it up with Jesus Christ and from Jesus Christ forever and ever, forever. King of the Jews. <laughs> Unto Shiloh come. Peace. Peace. Peace does not come unto Jesus comes. Ezekiel said, there is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. Jerusalem, the city of peace. The United Nuts in New York City are not going to bring no peace. No president of the United States is going to bring peace. Peace that is forever lasting will come only by God, Jesus Christ, and it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And unto him, him, Jesus, shall the gathering of the people be, and there is the second advent. There is when Jesus comes and if the Jews, if we believe it is at Celepetra. But one thing we do know, the remnant of the Jews at the end of the tribulation period, wherever God has that place to be, he's going to gather them all up. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. Now if you cannot recognize that one, that's Jesus Christ coming into Jerusalem. Supposedly as the king. Pilate, the king of the Jews. That's where he tells his disciples, go up. There will be a foal tied to a, a colt tied to the foal. Loose them. Bring them to me if the owners have need. Say, hey, what are you doing? There it is. There's Jesus triumphantly as a king coming into Jerusalem. The people are acknowledging him as a king, but it's not his time to be a king. 
He's to be the suffering Messiah. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what they couldn't understand. Now let's read. Let's look, look right before we go further. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. That's revelation. That's when Jesus Christ comes on horseback. So we got him coming on a ass. And then in this verse, we got him coming with blood-stained garments. Now when Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem, in the Gospels, his garments were not stained in blood. And when you look at that, as his coat under the choice line, semicolon he was wa he washed his garments in wine you see that semicolon circle it that is the church age and the tribulation period in that semicolon that's why a lot of jews can't understand is wait a minute he's coming as a king and then he's coming again why didn't he come down off that cross For the nation of Israel had rejected his first coming, had rejected him as the Messiah. So you see the church and the tribulation period in that comma. That's what we are. We're a semicolon, this church age period. 2017. 2,000 years. What is 2,000 years to God? A semicolon. And his clothes in the blood of grapes. He's trampling his, his enemies. He's stomping them. It's not what he did when he came on the ass. They're throwing their clothes and in the, in the, uh, the palm branches down at him. When he comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. His eyes shall be red with wine. Anger. And his teeth white with, with milk. Song of Solomon. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he does. This is spoken long before. Listen, they haven't even had the, the trials and tribulations and the rigor work of Exodus yet. And Jacob has already said, listen, when you get in that land, you're going to be by the Mediterranean Sea exactly where Zebulun is. And he shall be a haven for ships. And let's put it even further. Let's, put, let's nail the prophecy down. And his border shall be to Zion. We're going to name the place. How's that for prophecy? There's a few people down here that claim to be psychics, and I pick on them. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. And I've seen a couple times don't be in there with the tarot cards with someone pays them. Come on, be sus be. Be like Jacob. What am I talking about? Be specific. Oh, this is going to happen in your time. Date! Alright, you don't know the date? Give me the name of the place. And you know as far as the prophecy of Jesus Christ, it named the city where he would be born. Do your horoscopes in the newspaper tell you exactly where? No, they don't. Do they give you specific names? No, they don't. And yet the prophecy of God will tell you a name. It will tell you a, a time. It will tell you details. And if you were to take the prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ and nail those details down as far as his birth to his death and his burial place, among the rich. Never would you go to a psychic who can't tell you nothing. Or a weather forecaster is going to rain today. Oh, that's a 50-50 chance. Usually you're wrong. Why not the Bible? Bible prophecy. What's wrong with the Mormons? What's wrong with the Jehovah Witnesses? What's wrong with the Catholic? Catholics, that Pope keeps saying peace. Who we'll kissed the ground? Peace. There'll be peace. That guy's a liar. All of them. 
Jacob said there will be peace when Jesus comes. Jacob ain't wrong. Them popes are wrong. If Joseph Smith knew anything about prophecy, he would know to keep his hands off other men's wives and they would kill him. They didn't know anything, I guess. Zidon. Go check your maps. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two birds. Now an ass would be described today as your pickup truck. Track of trailers. He's carrying burdens. Asses would carry the load. When the children of Israel came into Egypt and back, those asses would carry the money. They would carry the seed. In this car, he, he's a heavy burden son. Merchandise. And he saw that rest was good. Oh, it's so good to take this off my shoulders. In the land that it was pleasant. And bowed his shoulder to bear. When you get down, you bow down for them to put on your shoulders. And became a servant unto tribute. Taxes. The outcome of his car is he's going to be do he's going to be a burden barrier of taxes, taxation. Now here's an interesting one. Dan shall judge. Dan means judge. Daniel, judge of God. God is the judge. Dan is like Ishmael. The first son. Oh, here, I can't have a child, hunt. Here's my handmaid. Here's Hagar. And I forget who Rachel's handmaid was. And they're both characters. Ishmael, the Bible says he will be a wild man. He'll be against everybody and everybody will be against him. That's the product of handing a, a handmaid to your husband to say, Here, bear children for me. It's not a good product. Dan, it's the same way. <clears throat> he shall judge his people. Okay, sounds good so far. A judge. We need judges. Unless you preach on the street and people come up to you, judge not least you be judged. Well, you know, you gotta judge red lights. You gotta judge is it safe to cross the road? Is that meat you're buying at the at the supermarket? Is it within date? You gotta judge eggs when you buy them and milk. You gotta look at that date on the milk carton. You got to judge to realize, is that register open or is that one closed? Or is that one about to close? You got to judge in the grocery store, is this a good price here or is it a better price there? Is it really a good sale? We got to judge everything. But we just can't judge when it comes to your sins and about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. I don't want to hear that, they say. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. The implication here is that he is not. And Dan, as we set forward into the Bible and see Dan, he is a character out of place. And we see by his father... You're like my children, your people, and shall judge as a tribe of Israel. It's a strong implication there. And we will see Dan a type of Antichrist. And when you get the 144,000 in the book of Revelation, Dan and Ephraim are missing. The one that Jacob places his right hand on the younger son, Ephraim. Ephraim sins wickedly. Those two sons out of the tribe of Israel are missing 144,000. Joseph shows back up with Manasseh. And Levi shows up back as a tribe. And Levi has not been a tribe since Exodus 20. They are the priest. 
And when it said back here, we'll divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel, those Levites did not get a land grant. Now they got possessions of lands amongst the tribes of Israel. Jacob gave them some land. Benjamin gave them some land. They were given Jerusalem. Simeon would give them land. Zebulun would give them land. But as one of the tribes of Israel, the implication is there. Read it. Again, I apologize for my sinuses. Dan shall be a serpent. Okay, of all the animals in the Bible, serpent good? Where do you see the first serpent? He's interfering with, oh, man. with Adam and Eve. And look at the destruction he did. And we again, we're told in Revelation 12 that the old serpent is Satan, the devil, the dragon. So Dan does not have a good description. He is as one of the tribes of Israel and a serpent. By the way, in the path that they're going, he's in the way. An adder, that's a poisonous, poisonous snake. In the path that biteth the horse's heels. They're moving on, they got the horse. He bites the heel. Now the horse's heel, but where do you see a particular reference to heel in the Bible when it comes to the serpent? March back to Genesis 3.15 when, when God is speaking to the serpent and curses the serpent about the heel. You know, Genesis 3.15, one of those great verses of the Bible about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the woman seed, the Satan seed. So that his rider, the rider on the horse, shall fall backward, backslide, makes them fall, purposely makes them fall. That's not good. When you make someone fall. Now, verse 18, 666, we see something remarkable. He's gone through these sons. And after Dan, I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Dan, you are this, you are this weird ca character. And then he, oh, I've waited for thy salvation, O Lord. He's not talking to Dan. It's like a sigh. It's like, oh, I waited for thy sake. Whatever he says about Dan, he's like, oh, Lord God, come, will you? And we already talked about prayers are not going to make God come any quicker. I have waited for thy salvation. Or what's Jacob saying? I have waited for the Messiah. Whoa. When are the Jews are going to be waiting for the Messiah to come? At the end of the second advent. And who's going to be in Jacob's trouble? The Antichrist. And what son did we just talk about? We talked about Dan, the serpent, the adder, biting the heels. He's going to judge as... The tribes of Israel. Maybe the Antichrist is going to proclaim himself to be Jewish. And they're going to be wanting that Messiah to help from God Almighty. That pictures Jews at the end, near to the end of the tribulation period. God, a troop, will overcome him. But he shall overcome at the last. Now, A.W. Pink says, 1 Chronicles 5.26, Deuteronomy 53.20, Jeremiah 49.1-2, 1, 1 Kings 17.9, Joshua 19.28, and 1 Kings 5.1-10. Right or wrong? That's Alpha Doug Pink. You want to check those references. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. 
and he shall yield royal dainties. He's a baker. Royal? He's going to be with the kings. I wonder if he was with David and Solomon. He's going to make bread. He's going to make uh, puffs. <laughs> I forget. It was a little bakery thing. He's going to make great ones, dainties. They're they're specified. They're they're better than the better of pastry. Think just a donut. Asher's going to make. That's just weird because we're going through, you know, the sins, the, the uplifting of Jesus Christ, land, sea, Asher, you're going to be a great baker. God has something to do with Jesus Christ. Bread, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Jesus sat down with his disciples and said, here, take this bread. This is, this is my body. It shall be broken. Naphtali is a hide deer let loose. He giveth goodly words. Now, you know what the Bible prophecy is in that one is? Out of Naphtali shall, the, shall he come. In darkness they saw a great light. From Jesus Christ begins his ministry from Naphtali. According to the scriptures. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Branch. Even a fruitful bough by a wall whose branches run over the wall. A grape. Grapevine. Typical of Jesus, of, of the Jews. The this Jerusalem is pictured as a, um, as a vineyard. Joseph is, is he's a well vine that has been, and is being watered. You do know that Jerusalem is in the land of Benjamin. And Benjamin, the son of the brother of Joseph through Rachel. And Joseph, the firstborn of, of Rachel, the love of Jacob. And Jacob, I mean, Joseph and Judah get the longest blessing. I don't see anywhere where Judah got reproved. There's reprovement in Joseph's blessing, but it's not Joseph. We'll see. The archers have surly grieved him and shot at him and hated him. The reference, the context is to what the brothers have done to Joseph. And when we jump to Jesus Christ, the first advent is the attitude that the Jews had to Jesus that they rejected him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And what did they give Jesus? They gave Jesus a cross. What did they give Joseph? They gave Joseph a pit. And then they sold him. And Joseph never went back to the home that God had. For the children of Israel. His bones came. But Joseph didn't come. But his bones. Abode in strength. Still man. He still had character. He still was alive. He still loved God. He still worked with God. And the arms of his hands. Were made strong. By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Tells you what God. J Joseph served. When, when Joseph went before Pharaoh and said, God shall give you the interpretation. We know what God that is. That is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Not the God of the Nile. Not the God of crocodiles. Not the God of the sun. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joseph's God. And that God, the God Almighty Jehovah, strengthened Joseph. Even though the world was against him. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And God will strengthen you, brethren. All the way back in Genesis 49. Don't faint. From thence is a, excuse me, is the shepherd. That's the first advent. John ch chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the shepherd. 
Joseph, greatest type of Jesus Christ, there he is. The first advent. Ready? <clears throat> Comma. Pay attention to your punctuation marks. The stone of Israel. Daniel chapter 2 speaks about Jesus Christ as the stone. Shepherd. First advent. John chapter 10. Comma. Stone. Second advent. Daniel chapter 2. That comma is the church age. That comma is the church age. That little thing now, sorry. So again, we see the first and the second advent with a punctuation mark. Of the church age and the tribulation period. Even by the God of thy father. That would be Jacob. Jacob's God is the same God of Joseph's God. Which is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who shall help thee? God's able to help. Not man. God can help you more than man. And if the person that God wants to help you won't do it, stops doing it, God will find somebody else. <clears throat> what do you do if you need something and nobody will help you out? What are your resources after that? But what if you turn to God and say, God, I need help. And God says, okay, I'll send you Fred. No, God, I don't want to do that. Fred, go do it. I don't want to do that. All right, fine. Mike, you go do it. All right, I'll help him out. I've had it. You know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to do it no more. I'm tired of it. Then God will move to Eric, and God will move to Phyllis. God will move to Frank. God will move. God has the entire population. Get your help from God. And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, the blessings of the breast and of the womb, childbirth and weaning. This is almost like the blessing that Isaac did to Jacob. This is the firstborn blessing being applied to Joseph now. Reuben failed. Reuben got out of that by his wicked sin. Who is the next boy to receive that firstborn blessing? It would be Joseph. You say, well, how would that happen? All right. Jacob served seven years for Rachel. He got Leah instead. He served another seven years for Rachel. He had two wives, Leah, her firstborn, Reuben, he blew it, Rachel, she her firstborn, Joseph, he gets the firstborn blessing. We say, well, what about Dan? That wasn't really a, that wasn't really a, a wife. As much as Hagar was a wife of Abram. God said, as Sarah has told you, Abram, send that wife, send that mother, send that child away. The next in line for the birthright, according to God, would be his wife, Rachel, and her firstborn son, Joseph. And here is the firstborn blessing from Jacob that he got from Isaac that he got from Abram Ham, and it moves to Joseph rightly and yet God has chosen Judah to be the line of Jesus Christ and Joseph has been and is the greatest type of Jesus Christ the blessings of the father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors. And that's 
forefathers, ancestry, unto the utmost bound. God has truly blessed you, Joseph. On the everlasting hills they shall be upon the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that has separated, excuse me, from the head of him that separate from his brethren. I mean, Joseph was mistreated by his brethren, and they separated Joseph from Jacob, and God brought them back together again by a famine. God used a famine to bring Joseph and Jacob back together so Joseph could be blessed by his father before his father died. That's so wicked. That's so terrible. And yet God used taxation to get Mary to Bethlehem to have her baby born where he's supposed to have been born. Trials and tribulations. Why did all this stuff happen to me? It may be something that God has planned to be planned and it needs to be done to get it done. Man is so rebellious. Benjamin shall reveal uh, that's to devour with eagerness as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour his prey, and at night he shall divide the soil. Soil. I'm, I'm sorry, my sign is. Again, Harper W. Pink says 2 Samuel 2, 15 and 16. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. And everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. Now, why did Jacob bless all the twelve tribes? I got one answer, and it could be, it may not be. Because he realized when, I know he, it was thought that he stole the blessing from Esau. And he didn't. It was sold. But he figured, man, if I get all the boys together and bless them at one time, there's going to be no hard feelings. I'm, I won't miss anybody. I don't want that ruckus that happened last time there was a blessing. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephraim the Hittite. In the cave that is in the field of Mechphila, which is before memory, in the land of Canaan, we read about this before, was Abraham bought with the field of Ephraim the Hittite for a possession of a burying place, both to be a graveyard. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. Sarah was buried first. She died first. There they buried Isaac. Jacob and his shield buried him there. And Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The only one who's not buried there is Rachel. She's buried on the way in Bethlehem. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost, and he was gathered unto his people. Well, that's interesting. God was involved in this. As soon as he's done commanding and blessing his sons, he dies. He doesn't get 30 minutes. He doesn't get an hour. He doesn't get a day, a week, a month, a year. He finishes and then he dies. The children, the 12 tribes of Israel have been properly blessed by their father as it should be from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the 12 tribe and it's finished. It's done. He dies. And Joseph was there to be blessed. Simeon was there to be blessed. And remember, he was put in jail. God called for those 12 tribes. He didn't call any of the 12 princes of Israel. I mean, excuse me, Ishmael. He didn't call any of the dukes of Esau. There is no Esau here. There is no Ishmaelites here.
the Muslims and the Arabs, oh, we're of Abraham, and, and God's blessed us. You ain't here for that blessing by Jacob before he dies. God calls 12 sons, and they are the children of Israel. What do you do with that? 